I don't like this. The French understand a wounded war hero. But corsets don't get votes. Not on a man. Jack is only 44. He's young. President. Corset. Damn it. I don't wear a corset. Well, let's see. We can use this for Buckingham Palace, mm -hmm. I think. I like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I can put those diamond clips on the shoulders. Yes, of course. The dress in which the First Lady will be presented to Her Majesty the Queen, who I am sure will be very much taken by the tightly cut bodice and the flowing skirt. We want you, you see, to look truly, truly regal. Well, it is beautiful. I think a half an inch out of each dart. Yes, it's too this big one. in the waist. Right. Need to bring it in. The fabric is wonderful. Of course it is. It has been created as a work of art. Notice, please, the stitching. Precise, delicate, very, very British. They will experience style. Ah, well, the hem has to come down a little. Done. And uh, otherwise, I think it's fine. Fine. Incroyable. Oh, you know that I'm having Givenchy do the de Gaulle dress. Yes, I'd heard. Now, let me show you what we have for Les Français. Look at those. Les voilà. They're marvelous. With perhaps a hairstyle in the style of Louis XIV. That's a good idea. I have a feeling that Monsieur le Général will adore it. Paris, France. At the start of their European tour, Jackie reminded France of the liberation as she and President Kennedy took the French nation by storm. La Belle France showered warmth on La Belle Jacqueline and gave the Kennedys a film star's welcome. And there's a new word in Europe today. Jackie, Jackie. That means vibrant beauty. For Jackie is without a doubt the most original and exciting American import into Europe today. Monsieur le Président, vous êtes en France le très bienvenu. Tout y concours. The President quipped, I am the man who accompanied Jacqueline Kennedy to Paris, and I have enjoyed it. And so has the world. Le Président des États-Unis, qui vous assure ici la meilleure amitié possible. Les circonstances difficiles Premier de Gaulle, now in his 70s, seems to agree. Despite referring to the worsening world situation facing the Western alliance at this moment, he still finds time to compliment the beautiful First Lady. Here in Vienna, the rain clouds parted, and Austria gave all its generous affection to the Kennedys. Thousands forgot the Cold War to smile at the President and First Lady, who are here to meet Chairman Nikita Khrushchev and Madame Nina Petrovna Khrushchev at the Schoenbrunn Palace. It's an old saying that East is East and West is West and never the twain shall meet. But there's no doubt that when it comes to appreciation of feminine charms, there aren't any in disagreement. The world's photographers begged the Soviet leader to shake hands with President Kennedy. Said a grinning Khrushchev, enraptured by Jackie, I'd rather shake her hand first. Historic London and the Mall is the setting for the Kennedys' arrival in England on their way for a meeting with Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh at Buckingham Palace. Crowds lined the sidewalk in their thousands to cheer President Kennedy and Jackie as they arrived at the gate of the royal residence, chauffeured in a Rolls Royce with full British pomp and ceremony. After their meeting with the Queen and Prince Philip, the President and his First Lady were due at the home of Britain's elected leader, the Right Honorable Harold Macmillan where the reception they were given was no less enthusiastic. Cockney shouted, you're all right, Jack, and the smiling premier appeared with his friend, President Kennedy, on the steps of 10 Downing Street. And still the crowds called out, Jackie, Jackie, making the Kennedy's tour of Europe a triumph. England has given the president and Mrs. Kennedy a royal welcome. The FBI is interested in my friends. You want to change the rendezvous? This word, rendezvous. French, sir. American. I'm sorry, sir. Will you stop apologizing to me? How do we know if the woman here is talking of one, two, or three rendezvous? I would propose, sir, that we speak of... You please. leave the proposing to me. I quote to you from memory the rule in regards to use of foreign words in the Bureau. Foreign words and manners of speech will only be utilized when full comprehension is understood. You understand? Yes, sir. You know how I know that? No, sir. I wrote that. I know what French people mean by rendezvous, assignation, so forth. I know French. What I don't know and what you will do 
Let's go from here and find out whether this means one, two, three, or innumerable rendezvous in plural. Bug got most of it. She is the same woman who's been to the White House. Dates. They're all on file. Times. All down. Who are the other men? Well, there are several. Has she had sexual relations with them? We can't be sure. Either she has or she hasn't. Get me names. I want evidence. Get my man on the White House detail. Here. Now. After him, I want the agents on the Attorney General detail. And after him, I want the man on King to call me. I'll throw it all at the Kennedys. advice. I have a wide experience of men's pursuits, sexual matters. What are you saying? I would have enjoyed a family, but I shared the best years of my life with my mother. But you know that the president is associating with a woman in a way that is dangerously indiscreet. I hope you can prove that, because if you can't, Mr. Hoover, I am a careful man, Mr. Kennedy. I am careful of the office of the presidency. It requires protection. And I've met that requirement day and night since even before you were born. Let me tell you something else. There are two leaders in this country of different types, the president and Dr. King. I think you better show me your files, Mr. Hoover. Yes, at the right time. It's a tone of blackmail in what you say. That wall, sir, is government property you're destroying. Good night. All right. Henry, he, he wouldn't tell me your name. And what the hell is he uh, talking about? Well, he won't say anything direct, but not yet. You know, he's got her under surveillance. Not in here. Well, he doesn't have to. Don't think there are people around here who, who keep their eyes shut, Jack. Please. Oh, come on. The uh, 
Secret Service would never talk to the FBI that people. Is you know that is incredibly naive. Suppose you're a Hoover, okay? Just suppose, suppose he knows that you've been seeing some friend who's all tied in with people that she shouldn't be. I still don't see how I'm compromised in any way. <sighs> you believe that? What do you want me to, so what do you want me to do? You want me to tell Hoover to lay off her? Then how do I tell him to lay off King's people? How do I tell him to lay off anybody? Don't tell him anything. But Jack, every call that comes through here is log. Now you know that. Yes, of course. Right? Now you've seen the log. I mean, I've got better things to do than read the phone log. So you don't think that he has evidence? Huh? And on Secret Service people as well? He plays on people's weaknesses. If he's got something on you, if he knows that you've done something that you don't want him to know, then he'll... If he's got some dirt on you, he won't use it until you won't play ball with him. Well, he wouldn't use it without confronting me first. That's what he's planning to do. He is? He is. Now what the hell do we do? Now you tell me. Suppose he uh, does bug uh, Dr. King. You won't find anything. Well, then. You think I should let him bug King? That's up to you, Bob, but uh, as long as he doesn't hear anything, I don't see why it matters. Do you? all this affect Jackie? Well? That is uh, between uh, Jackie and me. I don't think she needs to be told, do you? She won't hear it from me. I don't feel so good. We'll just play the 17th. No, you go ahead. I don't feel so good. Ambassador Kennedy uh, has suffered a blood clot, a hemorrhaging in a brain artery chances of making it. I'm sorry, it is a serious stroke. Are you telling me that he's dying? He's holding on to life by a slender thread. Mrs. Kennedy, I wish I could say more than that. The uh, Viet Cong have got South Vietnam by the throat. Sending in more American troops that I'm uh, severely pressured to do is not the answer. So what, what he is? Okay, we stall the military. Send Taylor and Rostell out there. Taylor is for neutrality in Laos. Everyone knows that. Rostell is for counterinsurgency. The military will listen to that. But for how long? I don't know. They'll have to heat. Look, if the uh, South Vietnamese want their independence, they're going to have to get it for themselves. What we have to do is find a way to uh, make them realize that the... Uh, Solution lies there in the uh, politics, in the uh, social reform, in uh, economic strength, not with a lot of red bandits uh, killing uh, defenseless villagers and uh, trying to sabotage the government. How long can you stall? Well, until we uh, find that solution. The majority is opposed to stalling. Yes, and that uh, majority happens to be the military itself. Have they forgotten who is commander-in-chief? It would appear so. Remind them, Bob. Remind them that I am the one who is responsible for what we do and uh, what we do not do in Vietnam. And I do not intend to become involved in a war in Southeast Asia. Excuse me. 